now. Um, and we're also going to be saving our chat discussion to post on the State Department website. So please be aware of that. Uh, second, due to the number of people attending today's webinar, we will not be using audio today. So if you have, um, you'll hear us, but we won't be able to hear you. So if you have any questions or comments, please type them in the chat box. You should be able to find the chat box icon on your screen. We will not be using the Q&A box today, so just stick with the chat box. Uh, you have the option to send your message to all participants or just the host and presenter. Uh, but to engage in the rich conversation that we hope to have, please send your messages for all to see. Uh, those of you who have a Mac, you may need to put your arrow to the top of the screen to access the chat box. If you have any questions at any time during this webinar, please feel free to email me at caroline.goldschneider at ct.gov. I'll type that in the chat box for you to see. Or you can send me a message through the chat. Also of note, we will be making time for questions and comments throughout the presentation, and we look forward to hearing from all of you. So without any further ado, I'm pleased to present Jackie Coleman, Arts Consultant at the Connecticut State Department of Education. Jackie has been spearheading the art standards adoption process and has been a tremendous advocate for the arts and for teachers around the state. So thank you, Jackie, and welcome. Thank you so very much, Caroline. I am so excited to be here with all of you, and um, I am looking forward to today's webinar. We only have a half an hour, so we're going to try to be really succinct. Um, we've divided it into three sections. First, you're going to get an overview of the organized system called the National Core Art Standards. Then after that, we'll spend a bit of time going over the new approach in these standards. And finally, we'll take a few minutes to navigate the website itself. Okay, there's going to be two opportunities for questions, uh, but because of the size of this webinar, we're going to ask that we take questions only through the chat box, and we'll let Caroline manage those questions and uh, pose them so we can have a little bit of dialogue that way. All right, thank you so much. Here we go. We're starting with the big picture. The group that wrote the National Core Arts Standards which I am now going to call NCAS for the rest of this presentation, was called the National Coalition for Core Arts Standards. And the National Coalition for Core Arts Standards was made up of 10 associations nationally. They had to decide where to begin their work. So at the beginning, they said, let's talk about an approach to take. Let's model the process after understanding by design's backward design model. So in other words, they talked about what they believed the desired results should be for these standards. What did they want at the end for our students in our schools across the country? So I'd, I'd like to ask you to think about this, these questions for a moment and feel free to put some answers in the chat. Why study the arts? What is it about the arts that make the experience valuable to students, to education, to a community, to a nation. The National Coalition for Core Arts Standards used these exact questions to get at what they thought their desired outcomes were for the NCAS. So I'm going to pose them again. Why study the arts? And what is it about the arts that make the experience valuable to students, to education, to, to a community, and to a nation? Here's what they came up with. Communication. Creative personal realization, culture, history, and connections, a means to well-being and community engagement. So when you are working with these standards and you get bogged down, consider coming back to these overarching ideas. This is where the end result is. These are the desired outcomes that the writers were heading towards. Now, the NCAS are intended collectively to develop artistically literate citizens. Once they had the overarching vision of artistically literate citizens, they decided that the standards needed to cross over and work across disciplines, meaning that there are anchor standards for all five of the, the disciplines. And yes, I said five because they also added a fifth arts discipline, media arts. The next step was to identify the best way to art articulate the standards, what components were needed to communicate the standards across all of these art forms. So now we're going to take a few minutes we're going to talk about artistic processes, 
anchor standards, performance standards, and instructional resources. One of the components of the NCAS system, the artistic process, articulated here in our little cartoon. In Connecticut, in our currently adopted 1998 standards, we are familiar with the artistic processes of create, perform, and respond. In NCAS, there are now four artistic processes, create, perform, produce, and present in order to service all five of the art forms, respond, and connect. The new process of connecting brings in the global through line identified in those early philosophical foundations leading toward artistic literacy. Each of the four artistic processes that I just mentioned to you, create, perform, prevent, present, uh, connect and respond is tied to one of the 11 anchor standards. All 11 anchor standards are overarching for all five of the arts disciplines, dance, media arts, music, theater, and visual arts. Here is anchor standard one, generate and conceptualize artistic ideas and work. If you had to connect this anchor standard to one of the artistic processes, create, perform, produce, present, respond, or connect, write in the chat which one you would connect it to. In NCAS, this anchor standard is connected to CREATE. We'll take a look at where all 11 anchor standards land when we visit the website. This anchor, stand that, this anchor standard that is aligned to the artistic process of CREATE can be broken down into grade level performance standards for each discipline. And this slide with lots of text on it shows you an example of a performance standard in grade five by discipline under anchor standard one. At the high school level, performance standards are not written by grade level, but rather by proficient, accomplished, and advanced. The last piece of the organized system is the instructional resources. We have model cornerstone assessments, which are wonderful vehicles for exploring assessment tools in your own classroom. They also have rich tasks and um, student benchmarked work. There are power verbs that help you to articulate in your curriculum what it is that you're going after. There's process components to help you link from one thing to another. They also have enduring understandings, which are the big ideas that speak to why it's worth studying and essential questions to provoke inquiry. And lastly, our instructional resources include inclusion guidelines. This is the NCAS conceptual framework as a visual matrix. You can find this on the NCAS website. Let's take a minute to re review where each segment in the NCAS system shows up on this chart. So first, we can see the backwards design that led to the philosophical foundations and lifelong goals articulated as artistic literacy right in the middle top. Next, we talked about the artistic processes, which are found on the left-hand side of this chart, the creating, performing, presenting, producing, responding, and connecting. And the first three you'll see right next to that in core arts anchor standards, numbers one, two, and three of the anchor standards are connected to creating. And then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, respectively, with each of the artistic processes. Then we looked at the performance standards, so that fifth grade example, which would be found in, those, in that open area in the center. Um, and lastly, you can use the instructional resources that are evident here, listed out as model cornerstone assessments, the enduring understanding of essential questions, power verbs, and process components. Take a look at this visual matrix after hearing this overview of the system. And let's talk about what jumps out. We're gonna pause right here, and for the next two or three minutes, um, we're gonna take this opportunity to respond to several of the chat questions. So go ahead and write your questions in now, and then we'll let Caroline take over. This is your time to write any questions down. What are you thinking about right now with this chart, with all of the pieces of NCAS? Hi, everyone. It's Caroline again. We're going to give you a little bit of think time.
when I first saw this chart, I, I was a little overwhelmed, and that's why we wanted to make sure we went back and kind of broke down all the pieces. What are you guys thinking? Do you, do you find your way into this chart okay? Is this helpful to you? Ooh, we're getting a lot of good questions here. All right, you want to pull something out, Caroline? I would love to. Um, so, yes, it is overwhelming, and um, it will take time to get used to. Um, but we're wondering, um, Jill is wondering, how is this broken down for elementary ensembles? Excellent question, and I'm going to invite you to join us next week at the same time at 4 o'clock. Uh, Caroline and Margaret are going to focus specifically on music and do a little bit digger deeping, uh, digger deeping. You know what I mean. <laughs> uh, you're going to dig a little bit deeper into the music standards specifically. Uh, they do break it down um, in five different areas in music, um, and, and you are able to look at grade levels and then also that same sort of high school um, approach. Great. And we have another question from Janet. How do we plug in the second column, those core arts anchor standards, into our curriculum? Oh, excellent question. Well, when you, we go onto the website, which we're going to visit in just a minute, you'll see the actual standards written out. And I think that it is actually district choice when and where you're, and you're going to have conversations, hopefully rich conversations with your colleagues about when in your K-12 scope you want to have which standards um, leading in a, in a class. Great. And Susan makes a really great point. I think it's going to be important that we go through this slowly. We'll invite you. This will be up on the website to review again. So you're welcome to go through this presentation again and look through it at your leisure to really get a sense of what's going on. Um, we have time for one more question. Um, uh, Nancy is thinking about um, using backwards design and how she's been using it for years in her district. And she was wondering if it was possible to email uh, us her lesson plan template and wor work on how to rewrite a plan using NCAS. Is, is there some, going to be something available for people to do something like that? Uh, so I just want to clarify, she wants to share something she's working on with us? Right, and decide how it could be best framed in the new NCAS standards. I think that's I think that's terrific. We invite and welcome all all reach out. We're going to offer as much support as we can. Um, I also know that over the summer, CAAA is hosting their week long or four day long um, professional development session. Um, I believe at Fairfield University, if you wanted to spend some time with colleagues and dig deeply into your curriculum as well. Uh, but yes, please do send what you're working on. Actually, we have not formally adopted these standards yet. The, we're going to go before the board in the fall. So if we can find out some things before then um, that might change some of our thinking, we can, we can adjust our position statement that we have, um, that we're putting forth as the recommended position statement with the standards. So that would be really terrific. Great. And we do have some other questions, but please note we're going to be saving this chat and we're going to use your questions and comments to develop some more webinars in the future. So we're going to move on right now. I'm going to hand it back to Jackie, but thank you and keep those questions coming. Great. Thanks, Caroline. Now we're going to take a few minutes to look at the mind shift required to go from working with our 1998 standards to working with this dense system. And yes, it is dense. The skills evident in our 98 standards are at times now only implicit in the NCAS. Each of these images has pieces inside that end up helping to communicate the overall concept of the image. So that's similar to the mind shift required with NCAS. The 98 standards really use a skills-based approach while NCAS utilizes a conceptual approach with the skills embedded. Here's an example. We're going to take a look at an NCAS standard in theater for grade four. And we're going to identify the knowledge and skills required to reach that concept and note that the knowledge and skills are not explicitly stated in the performance standard. Here's the performance standard for fourth grade theater. Articulate the visual details of imagined worlds and improvised stories that support the given circumstances in a drama or theater work. 
So we look at the idea of visual details, right? In order to articulate that, the, the students will have to have knowledge of upstage, downstage, stage left, stage right. So that will actually have to be taught in order for them to articulate the visual details and, and talk about where things are placed on stage. And then if we want to look at a skill that needs to be taught, we look at the word improvised. Uh, one of the basic skills of imp improvisation is making an offer. Right? You have to learn the skill and practice the skill of making an offer. Otherwise, your improvisation is going to go nowhere because you haven't offered up anything that, that the other actor can jump onto. So that's just a, a quick example of how the skills and the knowledge that were so clear and, impl and explicit in our 98 standards still exist in the NCAS, but sometimes you have to dig a little deeper because there's, it's being framed by a larger concept. All right, so here we are. This is the landing page for the National Arts Core Arts Standards. Um, and you can see at the top of the page is the website, and I'm actually going to take us inside. And here we are. And I'm actually going to go through um, some of the things that we talked about in the overview, just so you now have the, you have the sort of the overview, and then now we can look at it visually actually on the website. I know some of you may have done this before, but please just go along for the ride and post any comments that you think would help other people understand it better in the chat. So over here, uh, so he, right here in front of you, you see creating, performing, presenting, producing, responding, and connecting, and then underneath each one, you have your anchor standards. So this is where you, you find your three creating anchor standards, your three P standards, your three R standards, and then your three connect, your two connecting standards. So it's all right here. And remember, these are overarching for all five disciplines. In all five disciplines, we generate and conceptualize artistic ideas and work. What it looks like at a performance standard level in an ensemble versus in a dance class is different, but the overarching um, st anchor standard is generate and conceptualize artistic ideas and work. So also we have here something on the left-hand side, standards at a glance. And you can click on, and I'm going to click on media arts, and look at our standards at a glance. We have view anchor standards. You can choose whichever one. Like, let's look at our responding standards. And, um, oh, here we are. They've come right up for us. So we are looking at our anchor standards, and then here we have our producing, responding, connecting. So, and what's interesting about this one is this is a vertical presentation of the standards. That's actually what I really wanted to point out to you here, um, because you can also customize your handbook. I think this is going to be another. Um, vertical presentation. We'll go creating. And you can do high school. Let's take a look at what the high school standards look like. So you're clicking and choosing what you want to see. And you know what? Maybe we don't want to see all the resources and the enduring understandings and essential questions that are right here because we want to simple, keep the document as simple as possible. So we're just going to customize our handbook here. And you come up, and this is what will pop up. This is the overview here of your handbook for what you've selected. And now in order to see the standards, I'm going to go into the creating button. And here we have vertically presented the what I had asked for, which was our theater standards in creating with the anchor standard. And then we have proficient for high school, accomplished, and advanced, and what that looks like. And I can scroll all the way down, and I can print this out. And these are just the creating standards. And there's a print button right here. I can also share it. Um, if I go back here, I wanted to show you something that I did not do very well the first time, so give me a chance to go back here. This part, um, it's not coming up for me. Okay, so I'm doing a terrible job at that. Okay, well, we'll skip that. Here you can, down at the bottom, you can see there are resources. I'm going to click on the resources button because there's some really terrific uh, PDFs. I, I did I a little uh, comment in the chat about connections to Common Core, and you can see here that College Board did some research about connecting arts and Common Core um, and really kind of do a nice crosswalk so that you can have language you can use from the NCAS and the Common Core that totally align. Um, they also have the matrix that I showed you in an earlier slide here, um, as well as uh, the State and Media Arts Report and um, 
the, the coding system, how all of that happened. And then you also, along the bottom of this page, there's a glossary. Some people find this really helpful. Um, you can click on, they made decisions about how they were going to uh, term something. So here in music, we have um, what is ability. Ability could be in a lot of different things. So in terms of looking at the National Core Art Standards, this is what they determined ability meant. So this could be a really helpful document as well. Um, there's a lot on this website. I keep finding new things every day. Clearly, I'm not the uh, cleanest and clearest when, work, when clicking around on it. But you can click right here and download the PDF. If you're someone who likes the PDF, uh, here's the overarching conceptual framework, which is a, a, a very great read that kind of gives you the whole background and overview of the process. Um, and Lastly, I wanted to just point out the model cornerstone assessments to you. It's a big, big resource that you have on here. Doesn't mean that you have to use these. These are intended to be um, resources for you to pull from. And currently they have uh, model cornerstone assessments for grades two, five, and eight and each of the high school levels. And we'll look at that grade five there that's clicked. And here you can see, um, there's a whole big description, there's assessment um, procedures down at the bottom, knowledge, skills, and vocabulary, differentiation strategies. So you could take pieces of this and actually use it as part of your lessons or your unit. You could do the whole thing as a unit. Um, and over time, uh, the National Coalition for Core Art Standards is working on posting benchmarked student work, which is really exciting. So with that, I am going to exit us out of the National Art Standards website and take us back to, hopefully, yes, here we go, this screen where we're going to open it up for further questions. So Caroline, would you uh, take this on? Absolutely. Well, Jill asked a great question of the whole group. Has anyone in this chat used the model cornerstone assessments or parts of them in your classroom? So if you have, please feel free to share your examples in the chat box, um, or you can send them to me at carolinegulschneider at ct.gov, and I can distribute them to the people who are interested. Um, the other thing that I noticed someone asking, oh, Suzanne. Suzanne really likes the idea of customizing her own handbook, Great. but she's looking for more lesson plan resources. Jackie, do you know of any places where you can find lesson plan resources for NCAS? Well, funny you should ask that. Your very esteemed colleague, Margaret Fitzgerald, is actually concurrently working on developing some, identifying um, and, and articulating some resources like lesson plan templates um, that could be used to turn the National Core Art Standards into usable curriculum in your district. So we do hope to have a bank of those on the website. Um, we're trying to do that concurrently. I just want to remind people that we have not formal, the Board of Education has not formally adopted the National Core Art Standards with our position statement yet. Um, they are slated to hear us in September and vote in October. So this is a great time for us to be trying things out and sharing things with one another um, and then adjusting our position statement as needed. And the position statement does talk about sort of the expectations um, and responsibilities of each of the stakeholders and who, you know, who should be having curriculum templates available and, and, and um, what are the, what's the parent's role in really rolling out these standards. So if you haven't seen the position statement, um, it is actually up on the um, Connecticut State Department of Education website on the arts page right at the top of the page. And you're welcome to email comments to any of us on, on that position statement. Great. And I think that answered Ruth's question. Um, Margaret asks, can you speak to media arts and where that might live? That is an amazing question, and I think that is a very hot topic across um, the United States at this point. Um, and I, I am getting clearer and clearer on um, what media, what we mean by media arts, and it, I believe it was intended to be a new art form. Um, and how I'm, I'm starting to grapple with it is that it is any of the other arts disciplines combined, right, with technology or media in some way such that if you removed one or the other, it would no longer stand alone as a created piece. 
So what I mean by that is you could have a, a dance performance and have a scrim and then have some really interesting laser technology on the back scrim. But if the lights went, if the, if the scrim went down or, you know, the lasers went out, the dancers could probably still do the dance to the music and still communicate it. So what we're looking at is this art form where the media becomes such an embedded part of the expression. Um, and, and we don't know where that lives yet. So my short answer is, is I'm interested in finding out where pockets of that is already living in our districts across the state so we can surface that. And uh, we are looking at continuing conversations uh, without burdening districts and without saying, you know, it has to belong in a visual arts classroom. Surely visual arts teachers do use media and surely music technology pulls in a lot of things and it is starting to happen more and more in theater. But it being generated as its own art form, um, we don't have a, a directive on where it should live at this point. Great, thank you, Jackie. Um, another question, what is the state expecting us to do? Are there going to be any supports coming from the state? Is the state requiring that we adopt NCAS? Could you speak a little more to that? Sure. Yes, the, um, Connecticut is actually what's called a locally controlled state, which means that each district can choose to, uh, to use adopted state standards or not. So a district could choose to, to continue to work with the 98 standards. What we have tried to do and why the Board of Education wants such a thorough um, stakeholder engagement process is because we do want to end up with a set of guideposts that can help guide all 169 districts so that it's something you use. So the you're not absolutely required to use these standards, right? But, but uh, we've, we've had some amazing reviewers and review teams sit down and look at them and talk about them, and we recommend them, and we think they're good. We think there's enough meat on these bones that this could be really terrific. And if we all do use them across the state, then if a family moves from one side of Connecticut to the other, there's a little more through line in their education. In terms of resources, um, you know, frankly, we all know that the state of Connecticut is in probably the worst budget crisis in history of the state. Um, however, we are doing things like these webinars, and we intend to do more, and Caroline is very serious in saying that we're going to take these chats away and take a look at some of the comments and questions and ideas and see what else we can do in webinar forms. If you feel like you have some great knowledge about a component of the NCAS, please let us know. We, you know, we could set up a webinar and have you be the presenter on it. We'd really love that. We want to share together collectively what knowledge we have, um, and we do hope that the Arts Learning Councils continue at the RESC, um, and I am hopeful that there will be some other channels and avenues for professional development as we roll out adopted standards. Great. Thank you, Jackie. Well, it looks like we're almost out of time, so I just want to give everyone the opportunity to send in one more question, something that they've been thinking about, something that's been bugging them. Um, a question or concern that you may have, I'll give you one more moment to type in any final questions you have. And then I think what we're going to do is we'll close out the formal portion of our webinar, but I'm going to keep the chat open for people to keep talking about this, because I know that some people had some resources that they wanted to share, and they may have some other questions of each other. So I'll keep the chat open for another 10 minutes after we formally conclude this presentation so that we can talk all together. Um, so one last call. Does anyone have any burning questions that they would like answered before we conclude for today? Give you a little wait time. <laughs> I want to thank you all for hanging in there, and I know that there's a range of experience and background with the standards. We wanted to try to present an overview that could be hopefully usable, uh, you know, depending for whatever rate, where you are in that spectrum of, of comfort level with the, with the National Core Art Standards. Oh, here's, here's a question, here's a technical question that we have. Does anyone know how to save the handbook to the hard, your hard drive? That seems to be a common question. Ah, well, if we, I'm going to take a moment, and we are going to go back, and we're going to try to do it together. That sounds great. If I can get this to go back. Hmm. There we go. I believe I have done it, but I can tell you from memory. So let's do 
Is the handbook, one of the handbooks, is that the idea? Yeah, how do we save one of those? Okay, handbooks? great. So we are going to click on, let's do dance and performing and grades three to five with process components, Margaret's favorite thing. And um, we're going to customize it. Excellent. So I'm wondering, so you guys, can you see my screen up here where I have um, edit and file? Yes, we can. So I'm thinking if I do save as, because you're seeing my personal computer screen right now, I think yeah. I just saved it. Oops. Or I made it completely disappear. Do you have a white <laughs> screen right now? There is a blank screen right now. Excellent. This might be a good question for someone to figure out, and if you do ah. figure it out. Here it is. No, oh, you just there it is. There it is. Yep, you just go to File, Save As. I could save it to my desktop here. I could save it, you know, to my folder, my travel folder, or wherever. So really, you just um, go ahead and use your own computer's file edit um, buttons at the top of the screen. All right? Great. And Jill says that she's been able to copy and save it as a Google Doc. Beautiful. Um, thing that you might also want to try. Great. Great. Well, I hate to cut the conversation short, um, but we're out of time. And again, I'm going to keep the chat open for a little bit in case anyone wants um, a little bit more time to chat with their colleagues. So thank you so much, Jackie, and thank you everyone for attending. This webinar will be posted on the CSDE website, and we will be sure to send a link out to everybody. You can also save the chat yourself, actually, by clicking File and Save As Chat if you're interested in saving the chat portion of today's webinar on your own computer. If you have any other questions, comments, or concerns, please don't hesitate to contact either Jackie or myself. We also have two upcoming webinars that really dive deep into some of those lesson plans that you're seeking, NCAS and the Music Classroom next week on the 12th, and NCAS and the Art Classroom the following week on the 19th. And we hope to have even more specifically tailored webinars in the future based on your questions and comments in the chat. So thank you again, everyone, and have a great afternoon. And we just end today with a reminder that everything new is difficult. Have a great afternoon. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, everyone.